Hey, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. How about you? Not too bad. Awesome. What what was it like uh, at practice today with your guys? What was sort of the latest that you've seen on the field from from those guys? Yeah, I think there's. Uh, I think what you and I, as we talked about from day one, I think the greatest thing that I'm seeing right now is just the growth in these guys. Right, uh, playing the game of football is not just uh, predicated on talent. Like you have to develop your talent, and you've got to continue to get better every day. And I think uh, the one thing that I'm starting to see out of our guys is the understanding of the playbook. Uh, understanding of the details of what we're asking them to do, and, uh, and they're starting to make some plays because of it, and I, I think that's the most gratifying thing. Mike, you've gone through this process before. You go into a new wide receiver room, but for the fact that it's been just so quick since you got here, the quick turnaround between yeah. getting here and then obviously practice is starting, what have you relied on to be able to build some of those relationships as they look to earn your trust, but vice versa as well? Well, I think the biggest thing is is, is – coming into that room and, and not uh, uh, demanding what I want out of that room right away, not trying to build up to that moment. We ain't got time for that, you know. And, uh, and I think the biggest thing is, is, is coming in and setting those standards that we want, uh, what type of players that we want to become, uh, how we want to help this football team, and this is how we're going to do it, and we're going to start now. And, uh, and we're going to have to grow up fast. And I think that's been uh, the best part about all of it is, is there's – the guys have responded to that really, really well. You know, rather it's the meeting rooms, um, rather it's just questions or text messages. The communication has been phenomenal. Um, I've, 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 I've seen it very quickly that there is a big care factor uh, and an understanding of our guys that uh, they're, they, they do need to learn a lot about football, uh, not just uh, how to play the game, but also the football IQ, right, that helps you stay around the game. And uh, those things have been uh, – those things have been great so far. Hey, Mike. Uh, we've seen on you know social media and even out on the practice fields, uh, Gage Larvadane making a lot of plays out there. What have you seen from him in, in your uh, couple weeks here so far? Yeah, you know, I've really been impressed with him, uh, along with other guys that are in that room. I think uh, to, to play wide out, you have to have some confidence and you got to have a little swagger to you. Uh, you got to be tough. You got to be mentally tough and physically tough. And, uh, and he has the skill set where he's – explosive and dynamic in his transitions. He's got great ball skills. and uh, But his desire to continue to want to learn has even been the mo probably the most impressive thing that I've seen since we've been here. Um, but he has made some plays. Uh, he's getting comfortable with what we're asking him to do. And, uh, and he's starting to be able to showcase the ability uh, that he can bring to the table here at uh, South Carolina. It's just five practices in for Mazio and DeBron uh, yeah. in college, but yeah. how have those guys come along? Yeah, so I, I, I think those two guys, uh, if you would if, if, if you'd asked me day one, you know, I probably would have been able to tell you that uh, the way they look and the, the way they were looking and every, just kind of feeling everything out, you knew it was day one. Uh, after the last two practices, practices four and five, uh, those guys have really sunk in. And uh, I, I would not say I would not say they're freshmen anymore. I mean, those guys. I'm impressed with their uh, their turnaround for their youth, but yet both of those guys have a very very high meter of competitiveness. Uh, they have a very big, the high character or high uh, care factor, and it has allowed those guys to jump in fast and uh, kind of start taking a little bit of some ownership that you belong here, number one, and. Uh, and now, now you got to continue to grow, and they both have shown that over the last couple of days. I, I've been I've been highly pleased with both of those guys. Um, we saw Nick Harbor out on the practice field a little bit today. We yeah. we know he's been going to meetings and stuff, but how do you develop a relationship with him when you're only maybe getting him in meetings and seeing him in spurts rather than you know having him on the practice field every day? Yeah, all I can say is uh, you know Nick and I see or talk to each other probably. Uh, four or five times a week, rather in person or uh, via text or or just come you know conversations on the phone. I understand where he's at and what he's what he's wanting to accomplish. Uh, as as I've been told, I mean, in, in myself that we have full support of that decision, and and we're, I'm gonna be his biggest fan. I hope he I hope he achieves what he wants to achieve. Uh, obviously, he ran the ten one six this past weekend, and and his first race, and so, but his mindset also is not only to accomplish what he wants to accomplish in track, uh, he also wants to be well-prepared from a football IQ standpoint once he gets back here in the summer, fall, 
And uh, I have he, he has shown me since I've gotten here that, that that's important to him. And we've set up those schedules to make sure he's ready to go when he comes back. Mike, what's the um, the dynamic in terms of just trying to build chemistry, the relationship, the rapport with Dow Loggins, trying to be on the same page as him and understanding what, yeah. not just the philosophy, yep. but trying just to, you know, understand everything that he sees and just to be able to have that same kind of vision as a receiver and, you know, quarterback dynamic as a coach, wide receiver coach. Yeah, and wide receiver you, you know, uh, you know, I, it's uh, – it's funny because you know, I've been around a lot of offenses in my life and as a player and as a coach. And I, I think what I wanted to be able to do was come in here and not just really ask Dow about what he's installing, but more just kind of see it on my own and then see through the first couple of days when I was here in regards to just some of the OTAs and whatnot, where I could just see how he coaches, what he's demanding, and then also continue to learn his offense, right? And uh, as I have gone through probably those first three or four days – and seeing how he's coached, see how he installs, uh, and then start realizing the type of offense that we run here. Uh, the offense is very similar to something I've been through in my career, and uh, I'm pretty excited about that. And so it's helped that transition to understand how he wants it done. Uh, I have a really good feel about where our guys are supposed to be, why we're running those concepts or why we're running those plays, how you're supposed to get there. And uh, I think it's been, it's been, uh, it's been very smooth since the start, and uh, I'm very excited about his offense. Coach, as they say, only one ball to go around. So how would you describe the level of competition in your room right now? Yeah, it's a revolving door right now, right? I mean, I think spring is a great time to evaluate, but it's also a great time to showcase your ability, how you improve uh, from an from a educational standpoint in regards to football, how that, how that relays over into the game or practice from your study habits. And then obviously your production, right? And that's all about them. This is a production game and a result-driven game. So, uh, but it's been, uh, it's been great to see uh, all these guys be able to go out and compete, uh, not worry about a depth chart right now, trying to just learn how to play the game. Uh, I think one of the greatest things that Coach Beamer does here at South Carolina is uh, from day one is he creates a very chaotic, high-intensity uh, high, uh, he, he just demands such a high, an excellence, right, that it creates a lot of chaos, which is awesome because if you can control yourself through chaos and you learn how to practice when it's chaotic, it slows that game down on Saturday. And so uh, all of our guys have been thrown in here and there. At, at, at whoever's out there at the first group or the first rep or the seventh rep, it's been revolving, and they've all been competing. And I think that also allows our guys to have – confidence right too where nothing's set uh the opportunity is still open uh and then you coach everybody the same way too you don't just sit over there and 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 stay around one of the guys while the other 12 are over there or whatnot and, and start you, you just don't you just coach every because you never know you, you have no idea right our, our room is so young that a lot of these guys have a lot of growth and development to go through and until you push those buttons you won't know and uh, so I think one of the best things that we're doing right now is having that revolving door, and then we'll be able to figure out after spring uh, where those pieces fall into place. And, but I'm pleased with the guys right now and how they're competing. There's obviously a, a battle at cornerback going on right now. Uh, who have you kind of seen that's given uh, your guys the most trouble uh, through the first week and a half? Yeah, I, all I can tell you right now is my job is the wide receivers, and uh, I coach the wide receivers, and – all I'm worried about is making sure our guys are doing what they're supposed to be doing. And, and, uh, and when all we respect the people that line up in front of us, but my job is to coach the White House, not to evaluate anybody else. All right, guys, thank you very much. Have a blessed Easter, too.